The Triple B Podcast would like to invite you to come break bread with your brothers. If you like what you're hearing on the show, if you think we missed the mark, or if we got it all wrong, reach out to us on social media. We can be reached on Twitter at triple underscore B underscore pod or search Brothers Breaking Bread Podcast. We are the Brothers Breaking Bread on Facebook and our email is brothersbreakingbreadpod at gmail.com. Further descriptions are in the show notes. Like, follow, friend, do all that good stuff. And please never forget to break bread with your brothers. How y'all doing? We out here chilling down the spot. What up? Breaking Bread Podcast in the house. Hey, we're having a little pop-up. Having a little pop-up. Let's make it happen. Let's not stop it. This is a beautiful thing, man. It's all this blackness, and we all just getting together, we're playing dominoes, we're eating, we're drinking. Mm-hmm. You know, food is always just the, the extra man. They deprive these people of their basic human rights. You know, and we call ourselves Americans. We're supposed to be above all this. They'll fake the crisis, they'll make it seem way out of court. Brothers, we breaking bread. How y'all doing? We out here, chilling in the spot. What up? Trying to hold it all together, man. Life is moving fast right now, man. So it's good to have everybody out there. I love that, man. I love it a lot more than I could, I could, I could, I could say to you guys. I'm not going to talk about basketball. Nothing's uh, happened with our team in the last six hours. We're going to start the same way tonight. Um, any basketball questions uh, don't matter. Um, since we left shoot around, 14 children were killed 400 miles from here, and a, and a teacher. And in the last 10 days, we've had elderly black people killed in a supermarket. In Buffalo, we've had Asian churchgoers killed in Southern California, and now we have children murdered at school. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to to the devastated families that are out there. I'm so tired of the, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm tired of the moments of silence. Enough. There's 50 senators right now who refuse to vote on H.R. 8, which is a background check rule that the House passed a couple years ago. It's been sitting there for two years. And there's a reason they won't vote on it, to hold on to power. So I ask you, Mitch McConnell, I ask all of you senators who refuse to do anything about the violence and school shootings and supermarket shootings, I ask you, are you going to put your own desire for power ahead of the lives of our children and our elderly and our churchgoers? Because that's what it looks like. It's what we do every week. So... I'm fed up. I've had enough. We're going to play the game tonight. But I want every person here, every person listening to this, to think about your own child or grandchild or mother or father or sister or brother. How would you feel if this happened to you today? Hey, 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 hey. What's going on out there, world? Triple B, Brothers Breaking Bread in the house. We got the full crew here, Lady Lavender, Kim, Honey Buns, 10 Meters, Half of the Buzz Doom, Joe Jeff, Zeb the Soldier, Slim AC, I am the KC Stork. Uh, yeah, what's going on, people? Kind of kind kind of, of hard to have energy after uh, hearing those words and also knowing what those words are directed to. So how y'all, how y'all living out there? Oh, we good, man. I'm good. Oh, yeah, down here. Good, good, good. On pins and needles. Nah, man, you... You, you say, you're say? right. Uh, it is kind of. I was actually feeling good <laughs> until I heard it yeah. again, and you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, just kind of bring you back to our current situation and reality. Well, go ahead, John. No, I was just saying on pins and needles, man. I work in I work in the school system, and uh, constant reminder that you know, what I'm saying at any moment something can go awry, mm-hmm. and uh, they could be real, real. real 
life consequences there. So. All right. Yeah. All right. You know how we do. Let's you know. Let's check in so we can get it in. Uh, I'm just you know. I'm just gonna go by who I see first here on my screen. Uh, Honey Bonds. How you living, ma'am? Hey, gents and lady. How y'all doing? Um. So this is week one of of demo, and the house is is coming together. Things are looking good. Um. This was just a rough week. So I guess the, the house stuff was a needed distraction, you know, with everything going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, but everything's all right over here. We're good. Good. That's Thank good. you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Ten meters. How you living, That's man? What's happening? Man, uh, it was, it, it, I mean, it's been a rough week, man. It's been a rough week. Um, even, you know, what's going on in Texas and everything like that, and also what's going on down here in, 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 at my job, at, at the, the job, just the constant nagging and everything. It's just been a rough week trying to stay focused and everything like that. So, um, but other than that, um, I'm doing all right and everything and the things like that. And just, just to hope that, you know, we could start seeing some changes pretty soon. I'm glad you're here, Pam. Yeah. Zeb, this one with you. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm cool, man. Everything's good. Um, feeling better. My eye's not... Actually, this is the first day that my eye isn't uh, feeling like, you know, it's not hurting. Yeah. So, that's good. Everything's progressing well on that end. And, um... Man, you know, happy to be alive. Happy all my kids are alive. Um, you know, that's that's enough. That's enough for me. This shit, man. <laughs> Lady Lavender, how you living, ma'am? I'm um, doing okay. Doing uh, like Joe said, the kid's different at school as a teacher. But I was also thinking back to how yeah. like pretty much my entire career because Columbine happened what like when we were young so pretty much my whole career has been uh, checking rooms and making sure doors lock and windows are covered and kids know what to do and I'm like looking in every room to see what good spots are and all that stuff so it's uh hey, real quick, let me ask uh, both let me ask both you and Jeff so do y'all have the do, do your schools or schools uh, districts have a Y'all like I remember like you know when we was in school how we used to have the fire drills and the tornado drills and all that type of thing. Do they act, do they do that? I'm active active shooter. It's probably a active, dumb, yeah, active yeah. shooter, right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably a dumb question, but yeah, okay. That, yeah, they have all those, and then uh, which studies show is like even more traumatizing for kids. I mean, kids who haven't been in a school that's been shot up is traumatizing to go through those drills. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, it's like I kids know what to so. do. So, uh, kids and understand these things. Now, I was listening to a podcast. I've been listening to a bunch of stuff about these shootings, and one of the things the person was like, well, maybe in the future there actually is hope because the kids who've been through this and lived their entire lives through this maybe will want to change the laws. But part of me is like, I don't think anything is going to change with laws and the ability for people to do stuff like this. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Steve Kerr even said in you know in the uh, speech that he you know that what he was talking about in the press conference. Uh, I think he said like right at near the end of it, and uh, you know which is pretty well known that like 90% of Americans support you know um, stricter uh, regulations you know on weapons or expanded background checks or whatever it yeah. may be specifically. And it still ain't, you know, ain't nothing happened thus far. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of like you. I don't see any, uh, you know, we can get more into this after checking in, though, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Slim AC. Uh, I am Steve Kerr. Um, what he said um, is what I feel, bro. <laughs> um, it's been a been a been a week, bro. I mean, between all the shit going on in the media and you know, it's just mentally exhausting, man. So I don't know, man. I don't have a lot of words, you know. Once we hear that, revisit that. Um, as far as me, 
you know, I'm, I'm good, man, maintaining, um, you know, I had, um, I had my mom, my stepdad, my sister, and my daughter all in the same place at once, uh, this weekend, which is a rarity. Um, well, not this weekend, but actually, I'm sorry, uh, yesterday. They were all in uh, the same place at once, like I said, which is a rarity. So that was a uh, that was a moment. I actually captured it on camera and just kept it, and you know that was a moment. So you know, other than that, man, we're gonna get into it and, and keep it pushing, man. All right, man. Thanks for joining, Joe Pa. What's up, man? What up, cousin? Chilling. Um. Let's continue the somber mood. It's sad. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm in a position right now where I'm having a good day. So, I, I don't know. I know we're supposed to be sad right now. I'm having a good day. I've seen the pictures. I mean, you, you, can, yeah. you can enjoy it. Enjoy it. <clears throat> okay. I'll try to do yes, what sir. I can. I'm, uh, I'm eating this good uh, per diem. I'm using, I'm, I'm, look. <laughs> I'm using I'm using up the district money and had steaks back to back nights, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Hey, Perdia money's always good money. Yes, oh sir. man, that shit that <laughs> shit tastes so much better when you ain't paying for it, bro. Oh, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, that salmon was heavenly today, bro. Yes. <laughs> Nigga right. had two entrees. Like, I want I want the tea mm. and the salmon, nigga. <laughs> this, motherfucker, this motherfucker eat like a, a fat mobster dog. He got the motherfucker. He got the shit tucked in his shirt. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm t- hey, King's disease. I'm gonna get that get that gout. That's what I'm looking for. Get that gout. <laughs> you over there eating like Polly in jail, nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I got, I, got, I got a system. I got a system. <laughs> oh shit. That's what's up. Nah, man. Yeah, we uh we at the state track meet. Um, so we 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 took two races. Um, we came in with the last seed in uh, both of those races. Uh, one of them was our four by one, and um, we upset the uh, upset the stats. We we went from sixteenth to third. Um, oh. In one in one race, yeah. So I mean, and, and part of that is we had a guy. And I don't know if I told the story last week or whatever, but we had a guy who took a a vacation to Miami in the middle of the season. Right. And so I think I told you that last week. So yeah, he he's back now. Mm-hmm. So uh, the Austin got us through um, without him. So we we barely got through, but we got through. So we were 16 seed. But we went ahead and ran true to form today, and we were um, third um, and a hundredth of a second off a second. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, um, we're going to show up tomorrow. They, you know what I'm saying? We're going to do our job. They're going to have to do theirs, and we're going to see where you know where the chips lay. You know what I'm saying? So uh, Let it do what it do. They, they're, uh, the kids right. are excited. They are thinking state championship. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, you know, we'll see what to do. We'll see what to do. Let's go, Joe um, Pop. Let's yeah, go. Man, we're, 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 yeah, we're having, we're having fun up here, man. Let's go. We're having yeah, fun, so. This is good. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the weather, yeah. The weather's excellent, too. Yeah, it is so. a good weekend. Yeah, you're right. And you was worried about that last night. Uh, meaning, I, I meant to men, mention also that I, you know, uh, uh, was, having, was able to uh, go and chill with Joe. Last mm-hmm. night for a couple hours, you know what I mean? Because he's uh, they stand in town, mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah, it was raining last night. So I remember you kind of, you know, you was like, I don't know what this weather gonna be like tomorrow. You know what I mean? So it started, it started out cold, but then it started, it started to get up. The temperature rose pretty quick, and so by then we were on the track, and um, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? High track, we started blazing it up. You know what I'm saying? So that's all right. right. That's what's up. There you go. Yeah, man, yeah, man, so that's what I do. That's what I do. Bosco, what's going on, man? And real, real quick before you go, Bosco. Go ahead, go ahead, pimp. We got a, uh, we, we got a game seven in a couple of days in Miami. Let's go. Okay. Let's okay. go. Nope. Uh, go ahead, bro. Nah, good, man. It's, it, it's in in light of what uh, we opened with and what we probably gonna, we will, not probably what we gonna talk about. It's good to hear to hear some uh, some school children out uh, being successful, being alive, and mm-hmm. uh, enjoying the gifts that have been uh, given to them, and they, they they have developed 
you know, due to your uh, your teaching. So that's good to hear, man. Over here, man. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, hey, raising babies. Uh, all my all my babies are safe. Uh, even the ones that are even the one now who's uh, far away down in North Texas. Uh, everybody's good. Uh, so I can't really can't complain. Um, yeah, you know, it's kind of. You know me. I always try to have a joke to tell, man. But this shit is crazy. This is some, this is some strange shit. Some strange times that we continue to to live in and exist in. Uh, send the asteroid. But let's uh, let's keep it moving. All right. So we opened up with Steve Kerr uh, talking about the uh, school shooting down in Texas. Um, I found a report that gives a step by step. Uh, not step by step, but not into great detail, but kind of how the, sh the shooter came to be at in this uh, elementary school shooting these young babies. September 2021, shooter asked sister to help to buy a gun before he turned 18. March 1st through the 3rd of 2022, gunman sends message on Instagram about guns. So he's talking about just guns. Bruce brought something right now. March 14, 2022, Gunman makes another Instagram post. Um, post with the caption, 10 more days. The user comments, are you going to shoot up to school or something? The shooter replies, no. And stop asking dumb questions. You'll see. Investigators didn't specify what the post consisted of. May 16, 20. May 16th to May 20, 2022, shooter purchased guns and ammunition. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, the amount of ammunition this man had. Like, like this is things we we kind of mentioned where we or Steve Kerr was talking about. Like, there has to be some kind of red flag that goes off, right? I buy more than two uh, pseudofedrins, all of a sudden the fucking SWAT team of yeah. Town, Missouri, come kicking in, <laughs> right. come kicking in, the, you know, the Walmart door. But he buy, what they say here, he bought uh, two AR platform rifles from a local federal uh, federal firearm light. From a local federal firearm licensee on two days, May 17th, May 20th, he also buys 375 rounds of 5.56 caliber ammunition. Yeah. He ain't, he ain't, hunt, he ain't hunting deer. That's crazy. Yeah. This motherfucker nah. arsenal. Yeah. May 24th, right. 2022, the day of the shooting, the shooter sends Facebook message. The shooter sends a private Facebook message to a girl in Germany he met online, tells her about his plan to shoot his grandmother. Uh, the gunman shoots his grandma in the face, who then calls the police. What? Mm. Who then, wait a minute. The gunman shoots his grandma in the face. and then The grandfather might have called. I don't know. Okay, yeah, they wrote this weird. So either he called the she, police. She fled the house. She, after yeah, being, she oh, fled she, the house. After being shot, okay. went to the neighbors and called the police, yeah. Okay, yeah. the shooter steals the oh, vehicle, drives from his home to Rob Elementary School, which is about two-mile drive away. 11 a.m., 11.28 a.m., shooter arrives at school. Crashes the vehicle into a ditch near the school. He fires his gun at two male witnesses who began approaching the crash from a nearby funeral home. The witnesses flee and call 911. 11.30 a.m., a teacher calls 911. A teacher at the elementary school makes a 911 call reporting the crash and seeing the shooter, noting he has a gun. The shooter walks towards the school, climbs the fence to the parking lot, and shoots at the school several times. <sighs> a minute later, the shooter walks through the school parking lot. 11.33 a.m., shooter enters the school. The shooter enters the school through the back door, which a teacher had propped open. He op he uh, shoots at least 100 rounds to the classroom oh, and to the classrooms 111 and 112, which are connected. 11.35 a.m. Now, this is y Uvalde? Uvalde? Uh, 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 I think Uvalde. Uh, Uvalde, okay. Man, wow. <laughs> I got it. Anyway, police enter the school. Three Uvalde police officers rush to the, rush to the same door the gunman uh, used to enter, which was closed. They enter and receive grazing rooms from the gunman. They retreat. Later, four more officers, including a deputy with the Uvalde County Sheriff's Office, enter the school. 11th, and, and th this timeline, I don't know if it came before or after all the news came that the police may have told some lies about the encounter. So I give, I give you all that. 11.37 a.m., gunman fires 16 more rounds. 11.43 a.m., Rob, El Rob Elementary and Uvalde Police post on Facebook. Rob Elementary announced on Facebook it's under a lockdown status due to gunshots in the area. The students and staff are safe in the building. The building is secure in lockdown status, school officials say in the announcement. 11.45, 11.44 a.m., police officers are inside. 
police with the city of Uvalde and a local school district are inside the school. They hear gunfire. I'm yep. trying to understand why they would even have put that on Facebook. I, 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 and why I, I, is that there? Right. Especially, did they maybe, maybe, and maybe it's a thing of like, they're like, oh, the police are here and we can now post this and say the kids are safe. But why would you post that if the dude is still up in the school? Right. Yep. 11.44 a.m. Police officers are inside. Police with the city, within the, with the city of Uvalde and local school district are inside the school. They hear gunfire, are shot at, move back and get covered. Initial officers are there and receive gunfire, therefore do not make any, make entry. Officers call everyone in the area for additional resources. Resources, tactical teams, equipment, specialty equipment, body armor, precision rifle, uh, riflemen, and negotiators. They uh, they are evacuating students, teachers during this time. 11:51, more police arrive. 11:54 a.m., onlookers start filming. And hold on. These cops are right here, bro. There's a fucking shooting at the school, and uh, these fucking cops are telling everybody to leave. Do while everybody's here trying to pick up their fucking kids. They're saying that the shooter's in a new building. I don't know if they had a new building. Yeah, and that's also from the scene. Is also we have I have uh, news stories where police were tasing, and then we we had them in our both our chat groups, tasing and arresting uh, parents who were trying to break the police barricade to get to their students. <sighs> 12:03 p.m. Police continue to arrive, and a student calls 911 from inside. Um, now they put the transcript on Twitter once again. It hasn't been validated if it's true or not, but it has been known that what the police initially said was not what happened. This shooter was allowed to be in this building for way longer than he needed to be with these children. Uh, continue to arrive. A student calls 911 from inside. A student calls 911 from room 12 for 112 for a minute and 23 seconds. Identifies herself in a whisper. Meanwhile, as many as 19 officers are positioned in the school's hallway. 1210. So seven minutes later, a student calls back. The student calls 911 again and says multiple people are dead. Three minutes, 1213, student calls again. The student calls 911 a third time. But remember, I just told you they said the police officers are in the hallway. What the fuck are they doing? All right. The third time, authorities have not expanded on her comments during this call. 1215. Border Patrol Tactical Unit arrives. Border Patrol Tactical Unit members carrying shields arrive. 1216, students call 911 once again. The student calls 911 again saying eight or nine students are alive. Now, 1217, school announces active shooter on campus. Remember at 11 something, the police said there was a lockdown. Right. Onlookers and parents beg for action. This is also 1217, 1219. Another student calls 911. A student in the, the, the room that was connected to 112, 111, calls 911 and hangs up when another student tells her to. Probably because they don't want the gunman to hear them. 1221, gunman fires again. This motherfucker is still alive. Mm-hmm. Authorities say he was believed to be at the classroom door. On a 911 call from a student, three gunshots can be heard. 1236, students in room 111 calls back. The same student calls back for 21 seconds and is told to stay on the line quietly. 1243, gunman shoots the door. The student tells 911 the gunman shot the door. 1246, I can hear the police next door. The student call 911. 1247, please call, please send the police now. 1250, 1250, border patrol kills gunman. So what time was what time did they say he entered? Ele- uh, Eleven thirty something. Eleven thirty. The hour, man. Eleven. Over an Eleven thirty-three. Uh, I believe they said it's like a, an hour and like fifteen minutes that he was allowed to roam freely in this building. While po- mm-hmm. uh, while police were on the scene, not just he was roaming around, no one in contact. While police, police are outside right. the door. Yes. Right outside yeah. the door. Yes. Yeah. On on the scene. Yes. That's crazy. That's crazy. In in my in my somebody, there's gonna be. Go ahead, go ahead. Etwan, there's gonna. If there was a nigga, 
Who? Who are you talking about? He's he's brown. If the shooter was a no, if the shooter was a nigga, brown. I'm talking about he was black. I feel you, he but he's al- he's already been he's already been in, in the media betrayed as a transgender, illegal alien, blah blah blah, in his death. So I, I don't get what you're saying. What I'm saying is probably if he was a nigga, he probably wouldn't have uh, lasted like 11 minutes. I I don't know. Mm, I don't know. He he's 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 a he's a yeah, mess. I, I mean. <laughs> He's Hispanic looking in a Texas town. Yeah. And I don't know who knows when they knew I mean, what I his mean, race and all that type of shit was, man. I mean, I don't know. I, we, we, don't, we don't know. It doesn't we don't matter, know. really. I, and I, I, I hear your anger. Because there, there, there are some people to say that if he was white, he'd still be alive. So I, I, don't, I don't know who to believe. Nor, nor do so, I care. All I know is that this motherfucker got had 500 plus rounds of ammunition, two ARs, reports yeah. that he had... Uh, a tactical vest that may or may not had armor, but I can't believe what the right. police said because the first police said they shot at him and he had armor on so he didn't go down but come to find out they didn't really engage this motherfucker. So who knows what the fuck is happening right now? All I know is this motherfucker was allowed to be in a school building with weapons, ammunition, with children, and the police who who tell me, who, who take all my fucking tax dollars and tell me they need fucking uh, MRAPs and all this other shit can't even fucking go in the goddamn door to save these goddamn children. Are you fucking kidding me? Do your fucking job. If it's so fucking dangerous and I'm supposed to be blue line and all this shit, do your fucking job, dog. It's that simple. You took a job where you're supposed to get shot at. You're supposed to take a fucking round. When I fucking joined the military, it wasn't just for the fucking benefits. My th- I- I'm going to get shot at, my nigga. You're going to get shot. You signed up. Do the fucking job. This is fucking ridiculous that we got to read this shit. Just, like well, you said, 10 days, 10 black people get fucking killed because some dumbass white kid think we taking over the fucking world. Now this shit. What the fuck? You got politicians sitting on their asses, sitting on their motherfucking hands. Oh, they can't. Because oh. They, 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 they're playing power positions and shit like oh, that. No. When they can they... very well make policies to, to, to fix this shit. Oh, hold on, Anthony. We can't vote on anything. We have to go on recess. Sorry. Sorry, break time. Sorry. We'll vote on recess. Meanwhile, babies are dying. Babies are dead. A lot of them. Yep. For no fucking reason. Yep. I don't, yeah, man. I, I don't Look, know what tab to go to next. Some, yeah, somebody say something. <laughs> speaking of the speaking of the racial shit, of the racial component, um, one of the reasons that I believe, low, so you know, I forget what year it was now, but we had the they was the the shooting in the elementary school in uh, Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook, uh, was, yeah. This was is Sandy Hook all over again. One that Connecticut was that Connecticut, right? Connecticut. Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Connecticut. That was, I don't know the entire racial makeup of, you know, of, of that school and the, and the kids that were that were killed and harmed and the teachers also. Uh, but it looked like pretty much a white school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I think it was. And I forget what year that was, but it's been over, what, five, six, seven years? Mm, something like that. Yeah, when I, first, I think it was like 2016. 12, 13, somewhere yeah. 14, somewhere yeah. 14, 14, 14, 14. That's about right. So nothing's changed. 2012. And in fact, actually, Got a worse. lot of states. You're right. A lot of states have become more lenient uh, with their with their concerning their gun laws. You know what I'm saying? Just that aspect of it. And you know, so I don't see. It's changing, and you know, if they wouldn't do it, if they wouldn't vote, and, and people would, you know, once again, the people that elected them, that voted them in, across party lines and all that shit, is in favor of, you know, expanded background checks um, at the very minimum. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are are in favor of of, of moving of of uh, like Roger was saying. You know what I'm saying? Not allowing people to fucking buy to stack up an arsenal, especially in one fucking. Visit to a store, you know Run, what I mean? Like if people were smart about it and, and collected shit over time and blah, 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 whatever, you know, but anyways. Right. So, I mean, you know, motherfuckers wouldn't move at that time, man. I'm very skeptical and I'm very um, doubtful that it's going to happen when a bunch of 
uh, yeah. Hispanic babies. You know what I'm so saying? So this morning, um, I saw a news report just before I went to work. Um, and retired general, I don't know if you all remember, retired general Honoré. He was the guy that was in the... Uh, uh, of course. Yeah, okay. So he no, no, no. Who, who is he? Hold on, hold on. I don't I don't know who don't he is. A retired gentleman general that uh, kind of orchestrated the uh, efforts in the in Katrina. Okay. Her, her gang, Katrina. So what he said this morning was, uh, you know, the type of guns that they're allowing on the streets are are used to blow the body apart, just blow it out of right. it, out of existence. It says, right. what do people, common people, need with that kind of firepower? What is it with, you know, with that kind of firepower? Fucking government what, what can't tell me what to do. Fucking government do what I want. Can't tell me what to do. You know, you're not going hunting. You're not, this is not for hunting or anything like that. This, these weapons are there for one thing, and that's to destroy yeah, they're made to kill people. If I'm if I'm if I'm under the right, uh, you know, because my my step was in the military, he was talking about it. They give motherfuckers AR-15s, and he said basically they change the name, of, you know, from M16 to AR-15 or whatever. Yeah. He said they give them motherfuckers. Right. Gun, they give motherfuckers AR-15s that don't know how to shoot, so you can just point that bitch and shoot at anything. Mm-hmm. Because it's made to kill. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like so. I, I don't know. The biggest the biggest thing for me, man, is that, okay, I, I mean, I may be exaggerating, but it's easier to get a fucking gun than it is to rent a car. You know what I'm saying? You're not exaggerating. Yeah. So, you have, not exaggerating. You have to be over 25 to rent a car. Yeah. Bro. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So Do you now? On his, yes, sir. On his, 18th, on his 18th birthday, bro, he went in and bought a gun. Got yes. a little background check, did whatever he had to do. Three days later, know. this motherfucker came back and got another AR-15. If that's not a red flag, I don't know what the fuck is. What the fuck is, yeah. Red you flags know, don't exist. The color red don't exist if that ain't a red flag. You right. know what I'm saying? So so with that being with that being said, I mean, we can say race this, race that. But at the end of the day, it's 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 pure evil, bro. It's pure yeah, evil. Yeah, for sure. And 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 you was talking about it kinda last week when we were talking about it. Is is not to get too deep because I'm not a, a, a therapist or, you know, a mental person or anything like that, but motherfuckers are psychotic and have psychotic behaviors, and you don't know what's feeding those psychotic behaviors, but we have to find a way to make it easy, harder for people to feed those psychotic behaviors with, with, with what they're getting to, you know, act out their emotions, man. If we don't stand in a way that way, then what the fuck are we really doing? What, what's really the point? What are we doing? Right. You know what I'm saying? We all got, a lot of us have kids on this podcast. We send our kids to fucking school every day. We got two people on this podcast yeah. who work in schools. We go out every right. day. Why the fuck do we have to go out every day and look over our shoulder for some shit that can be avoided? It's not. Right. Avoid it. Avoid it. An elementary school. A fucking elementary, elementary school, school bro. Dog. And like we just said, like 2012, bro, we 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 ain't getting no better. No. December yeah. 14, 2012, Sandy Hook, yeah. bro, we ain't getting no better. We not getting better at all. No. At all. Oh, worse. Listen, listen, it's going listen, to worse. listen. Listen, I heard a stat today, like technically, technically there's been more mass shootings this year than days of the year. <laughs> Yeah, they've been doing it for a while. Think yeah, about that. That's crazy. Think about that. That's though. ridiculous. But and it's it's not the same, but we had the, we had the episode where a man went to pick up his child and got killed. Yep. This, is, this is the world we are living in, bro. Everybody just pulled out the pistol bang bang bang, my nigga. And it's just like <laughs> Mm-hmm. Hey, we, hey, we, you know boy. what? You know what? We need more guns, cause if 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 you had a gun and I got a gun, and then another nigga who we don't shoot. know got a gun, he might stop you from using your gun, even though right. uh, he don't yeah. know what he's supposed to be doing or who's the bad guy or good guy. That's the fucking logic of people who are just like, right. like, yes, I own a pistol, but if 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 the, if people said no more pistols, y'all can keep it. 
I, my my, right. my pistol stays in the house unless I go on the road for a very specific reason. I know if a motherfucker is to threaten me, I'm gonna be like, I might reach for it. You know what? Just leave it at home, bro. Just leave it at home. Right. <laughs> so I've been thinking about this for a couple of days because as I'm reading these articles, they talk. It's all this stuff sounds outlandish. I'm not. I'm not into guns. So I don't know a whole lot about them. But all that ammunition. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out like how do you purchase that and then not have a visit from somebody within a couple of hours or at a least a day. Of, hey Kim, uh, here on the podcast, Anthony may know he's been in the military. Anthony, well, I, yeah. I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna put you on the spot. The payload for a soldier who is leaving to do a mission is 210 rounds. This That's motherfucker it. packed. He purchased 375 rounds in one day. What mm-hmm. the fuck are we doing? Right. Whenever no. I left it, whenever I left the gate, I had my long bow, as they call it, my, my M16 or my M4, yeah. depending on the model and the, the year I was deployed. I had my sidearm. I had 210 rounds, uh, two grenades in my mask. That's it. Why does he need more than I needed him to defend myself in a country <laughs> when nobody fucking wanted me there? I don't understand. Yeah. And, where you, and, where, and where people are likely going to be shooting back. They got AKs there? Yeah, exactly. they got AKs. They got they IEDs, got, they got D-beds, I, all I, kind I of shit. Man. 210 rounds. 210 rounds is the standard payload for any soldier leaving a compound overseas. Why this because man need 375 rounds of, of 5.56? Which is the mm. same ammunition that I carry, but they put exactly. a little more gunpowder gun in ours. That's it. <clears throat> The other day I went to the store, I was trying to get some edibles, but I didn't get as many as I wanted. They didn't let me go back in the store to get oh, yeah. one little bag because I'm in the database and you can only do it in one day. If I wanted to get an abortion, you have to have in some states a 48-hour wait from the first day you say you want to do this at the doctor to actually get it done. Anytime I wanted, have wanted to buy a car, all of a sudden I'm in all these systems from credit checks and all that stuff is going into the system. But this dude is allowed to buy, if I want to buy fucking regular ass allergy medicine or cold medicine, I can't even do that without going to somebody and being in a database and somebody looking at my license and actually scanning my fucking license for that. But he can go in and do all that shit to get guns. And that's okay with people. People are the fucking NRA meeting today. To, what is this? This was Tuesday that this shit happened, and today they're already still saying fucking Trump mispronouncing names and dancing on the fucking stage. And then people are still like, oh, but we, we, we're sorry, we're sending prayers, thoughts and prayers, but we're not going to change shit. It's like, it just none of it makes any sense, and nothing is going to change. Nope. That's all that is. Send the asteroid. Yeah. You know what? I think even, and I think that the NRA is, is, is pretty evil in and of itself. But I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, and I wouldn't, I, you know, this is my, my, my information is probably is a few years dated, but um, I, I don't know the exact percentage, but majority of NRA members are in favor of at least expanded background checks. 90% you know I mean? of America is the statistic that yeah, I keep hearing. 90% of Americans, yeah. Americans want to change mm-hmm. that, but we have 50-something senators. I'm going to count all 100 of them, actually, and don't want to make this happen. And what is it, 400 and what is it, 38? No, I don't even remember how many fucking house people. All those people in, are keeping everybody else in this country, all the millions of people who want to have this shit happen, are stopping us. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's stupid. Background and it's supposed check. to be a representative democracy. So we vote people into office to represent our interests. But they, they can't represent our interests because they're, they're trying to get NRA money, so they right. can't represent yeah, people. exactly. Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, that's a, and that's a good point, Lady Lavender. I was th- I was thinking about that too. Like, yeah, it's like no, you you got too you got too much candy. You got to come back. Mm-hmm. Like, wait a minute. Oh yeah, not even that's just for that one. But even I mean, you were there the other times. If you wanted to get a certain grammage and you're mm-hmm. from out of state, you can't do that. Even if you're in state, you can't do. It. It's like mm-hmm. there's regulations on everything. Absolutely everything. I was driving through town and was getting tickets because my fucking sticker on my license plate wasn't updated the right year. Right, like all these exactly. things are regulated, but except guns and bullets. Yep. Everything else is is, is just it's stupid. 
But um, from continuing on this this story, uh, delay in breaching classroom during Texas school shooting was quote unquote wrong decision. Official says, and I say, no shit. The decision by the on-site commander to delay breached in classroom of a Texas elementary school during the mass shooting this week was the quote-unquote wrong decision, authorities said Friday. Nearly 20 officers stood in the hallway outside the classroom during the attack on Robb Elementary School for more than 45 minutes before agents used a master key to open a door. Now, you know what? If it had been a black woman's home where they thought some suspect was living there, they would have found a way to get that door open. Oh, yeah. We fucking seen it. Anyway. If it would have been a black woman's home, she would have found a way to get that door open. No, no, I'm saying like the Dude, police we, the police would have found a way to get the door open. They, and I'm just saying yeah. the mother would have found a way to get that, the oh, door open. Oh, that too, that too, that too. The mother that went to go get her kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because we yeah, get... Yeah, she, she we, said, fuck what y'all heard. I'm about to go get my babies. Yeah, because we know the police would breach your shit uh, at a moment's notice if they think you hiding a fugitive, but uh, niggas are shooting. Yeah. Mm, them, them brown babies? No, 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 sir. Anyway. Before uh, using the master key to open the door to, and confront the gunman, Texas Department of Public Safety uh, Director Stephen McCraw said in a news conference, the on-site commander identified by the pre- Associate Press of the school district's police chief believe 18-year-old Salvador uh, R- Romas <laughs> was barricaded in the classroom in Uvalde during Tuesday's attack and that the children were not at risk. Huh? My nigga, you say what now? You don't. You you, you 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 the commander? You got a nigga with AR-15, all this ammunition, who already, who already, hold on, who already wrecked his vehicle. While they're in the hallway, they're hearing more gunshots. What hearing the fuck more are gunshots. you talking about? And also, <laughs> but, the, but the grandma, the grandma also called the, called the police and said, hey, I see I shot in the face by this nigga. Yeah. So we, 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 we know that he mean business. He, he right. wrecked the vehicle outside the school and let shots off on people who were coming to aid him. To, to right. help him out. To help him he out. He has already shown seen him that crash. he about that business. What the fuck are they talking about? The, the fact that they could open their mouths to even say any of this shit. The fact that they sat outside of the fucking classroom while these kids are getting shot, while these kids are calling 911 and just asking for help. Like, they were doing what they were supposed to fucking do. And the adults that have the fucking guns that could have stopped this guy. Oh, all you got to do, all you got to have to stop a bad guy with a gun is another gun. You had fucking, what did they just say, 20 yeah. people in the hallway? With guns? Yeah. Yeah. And 20 motherfuckers but, couldn't take down one, one. But but y'all y'all ready? Because we already said ain't nothing going to change. Only it's going to change is there's going to be more guns in school. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's going to be the suggestion. With, with the police, though, in Uvalde, y'all know Uvalde is like almost a border town, right? Yeah, I get so it. I, I, no, I'm just going to pose a question, and it's, it's, it's not even playing anything. Like, what is the biggest situation they probably ever dealt with? Uh... Illegals? Illegal immigrants? Illegal immigrants. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, I ain't excusing shit because this shit pisses me the fuck off. But what I'm saying is, how prepared were those motherfuckers for a situation like that? I feel you, but like the same mm-hmm. way I, I tell for, a 42 Alpha, 42 Alpha, who's a administrative, a administrative assistant in the military, you're a soldier mm-hmm. first. Better pick, that right. weapon. Better pick that weapon up. We need you. We need you to get, back, and down, pick get up the, that weapon get the back of that vehicle, soldier. I need you. We need one more for this ride. Get your, mm-hmm. get, get your 210 rounds of ammunition. Let's go. So this is where, like, prevention pays. In some of these smaller cities, towns, neighborhoods, or whatever, they're going to need to have a certain level of prevention on the front end because there was nothing that could have prepared these people for this. I mean, I'm not making excuses for the officers that sat out there because some of these same officers went and picked up their children and took their children home. Right. Some of the articles are starting to say so. You know, I don't think anyone could have been prepared for this. So if we don't have that type of preparation, you know, we have to have the laws in place to kind of minimize some of this shit. Because I'm still thinking about, like, I'm stuck on this this ammunition situation, and I literally got carded for whiteout the other day. Like, I needed, oh, yeah. I like whiteout, like regular whiteout, oh, no, not the tape. No. But the, the, I, I, I don't ahead. know ahead, where y'all get the idea that they can't be prepared for this because I know that we have drills for this shit 
all of the time. And anytime we Girls, have a, security people at school are trained. Yeah. We said that you're falling or trained for this shit. Like, they, I think I just saw an article that said that these motherfuckers had been going through training and had that practice drills and said that everything was great and we're all ready for this. But yeah. I'm thinking about Little look, man, Water, Oklahoma. I don't think I don't think that. I mean, they probably have some training to an extent. But I've done active shooter training, and when I got in a real active shooter situation, some of that shit stuck. Some of that shit did not. So I mean. Some of it's fight, fight, or freeze, and I'm not saying they all froze, but well, I, I hear that you're, 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 but we're talking about trained professionals. We're not, no, we're not talking about people who are. You talking about the, you know, the clinicians? We're talking, talking about, about we're the talking police about department. The, the, police yeah, the police. Department. We're talking about the security but, department. We're talking about these people who are. Their right. job is to make sure that this does not happen. It. Yeah. And I, yeah. I apologize. Yeah, and at the end of the day, man, at the end of the day, they're 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 sworn police officers, right? And uh, you know they took an oath and everything. And life is life, right? So, it's it's true. You know, you can only have so much preparation, so much training, and life will throw shit at you that you ain't um, prepared or trained for specifically, exactly this specific exact situation. Correct. You know what I'm saying? That shit just happens. That, that's just life. And you just got to fucking, man, you just got to nut up. Exactly. Do what That's what you got to do. Say. This is what you, know you trained for. So, so I, don't, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't give a fuck about the, about the, you know, if there needs to be better training and preparation, then yes, I'm, I'll mm-hmm. give a fuck about that. Do that. But in, at that time, in, the, in that situation, man, you just got to do what you got to fucking do. You know what I mean? Like, like well, you I said, you, they, ain't, they ain't clinicians. I, they are police I, officers. I agree. You know what I mean? I, like, I agree with all of you. And I'm on y'all side 100%. But I do think it's some truth in the point that everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, of that's, course. Right. Yeah, of course. You know, of course. And I, but, not everybody, but not everybody buckles when you get when they get punched in the face. So and you, we talk about a whole police force. We talk about multiple police forces, right? Uh, well, there, there was there was the police force. There was I heard something about the uh, was it border with, patrol. With the US, uh, well, to, to the to the U.S. Border Patrol tactical team, they did press for the police to breach, and they went ahead and breached without without. I guess I'm reading this article here. But once again, I don't know what to believe because as we get further and further away from the story, we get more and more information that. I even heard one story that, that, that one of the, the officers may have shot one of the kids. I don't know. That might not be true or untrue. Crossfire is a motherfucker. It is. Ask Pat Tillman. No, no, but, uh, but yeah, I hear what AC's saying, too. Like, these small towns, they are quote-unquote professionals, but, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I, uh, so I definitely hear what he's saying. That's why I, I didn't mean, apologize. I mean, step with the, on his words. But... Also, like we all agree, end of the day, they are quote unquote trained professionals. They took an oath to protect this populace, blah blah blah. Zay. and I mean, they failed. They failed horrendously. Yeah. Horrendously. It would also be different if it was like, oh, there was one person out there and he froze twenty people. Twenty people. Twenty people. Yeah, people that's froze. what I'm saying. We talk about police departments. Twenty people. You know. Yeah. Because yep. uh, that's one person with 19 backup. Come on. Yep. Uh, and then uh, what were we talking about? So, the, yeah, the U.S. Border uh, Patrol tactical agents pressed local for enforcement to go into the school, but ultimately entered the building on their own initiative. Federal law enforcement officials told CBS News Friday the agents were backed up by law enforcement officials from several agencies. So, yeah, basically they told the Border Patrol to go on, go on in there. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about all this. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Let, let's hear from uh, the boy's uh, grandfather. Would he spend a lot of time in his room? Alone? And that's uh, Salvador Ramos. Alone? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, uh huh. This is grandfather R- R- Rolando Reyes. Sometimes he would go. I take him to work with me. Not all the time, but I would take him to work. And it didn't seem like he went to school very often. No. Well, this past year he didn't go to school. He didn't graduate, but he didn't go to school. Why? I don't know. You know, you tell them, you tell them, and they think they know kids nowadays, they know everything. Did you notice that he was growing disturbed? Was he becoming upset? Was he 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 was very quiet. He he was very quiet. Everybody says, yeah, he almost didn't talk very much. No, he didn't talk very much. Did he talk to you? Oh, just when we go to work or here or there, you know. What kind of? Very, very, very seldom. What kind of things would you talk about? No, we never did have a conversation just I remember he would tell me sometimes 
I remember when you, I was little, I would carry him, and he would tell me things like that. Why didn't he live with his mother? They had a, uh, what you call it? A, probably problems or something. And so it was his birth. That's a good question. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's his grandpa. His grandpa like, man, I don't know, man. This, right. his, his mama dropped, dropped him off on my motherfucking porch. I don't know, bro. <laughs> that's what he looked like. In the video. Yeah. Show show notes. Uh the, in the video. The whole video. interview, this man doesn't know anything. He, he really does not does, I mean that's what he says. Yeah. He, he don't know that his grandson's going to school or not. No, he said he, he don't know that no, he his grandson's going to school. He, no, he, 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 no, he, no, he said he ain't go to school this whole year, nigga. He said he been out of school. Nigga. He we don't talk about what he does when we go out to work or whatever. This motherfucker don't go to school. This motherfucker buying up all these weapons. Where is he keeping this shit? I mean, just like the last shooter, he was keeping it in the house. You know, it, there's a consistent... I go back to the prevention piece of it. Like, people aren't talking to their kids. People aren't no. engaging in conversation. Just, you know, what's going on in your head? How you doing? Nothing. They're not putting clothes in their kids' closet. They ain't making sure shit's hung up. You know, they just... People are just so disconnected. They're not even tapped into what's going on with their kids' lives. I, mean, I feel like some of this... I don't know, maybe. I feel like he was, like, screaming out for to get caught. I'm still just trying to, the guns, everything being back-to-back. -back. I mean, some of this shit is just so super outlandish. And even with the last shooter, mm -hmm. he talked about thinking that he was going to get caught because he had a ticket from where he was scoping out the supermarket, and he was supposed to be at school. And the ticket got mailed to the house, and the parents never questioned him about why he wasn't in school. And why he was two hours away scoping out this grocery store, mm. like that type of shit matters. If if you if you're seeing these red flags as a as a loved one as a parent, it's important to to think the worst because that could be happening. And I'm pretty sure as small as this town is, he he knows somebody intimately that he killed. You know, I, I mean, I, I imagine that the family has lost another family member besides the shooter, besides grandma getting killed. It had to have been like a cousin because it seems like it's a real small town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. You're right. I didn't think about that, but you're probably right. But grandpa seems like, I mean, grandpa in the interview seems like he was like the kid was just dropped off with us. Like he didn't have no mm -hmm. else so he's just here, so I'm taking care of this little motherfucker because I have to feed him, mm -hmm. take, teach him how to work, try to teach him how to make some money, live for himself, and, like, he really didn't fuck mm -hmm. with him. Right. But, you know what I mean? And that, that, again, that's a bigger piece of the picture and a bigger part of the problem right. is, of them being disconnected. But it seems like there's, you know, like what, what Bosco just said, the question he asked, well, why ain't he with his mama? Like, what's really going on? Because they, it, it seems, it, it's, Obvious, like they didn't know what he had or what he had going on. And, and, and also, though, I mean, let's not forget some of the generational stuff, too. We talk about this as grandfather, certain, I mean, and also the culture and things that we know, we learn about certain cultures, like just like motherfuckers, they just don't talk. We go to work and then we come home, we eat, we go to sleep, mm -hmm. we, go, we go to work. You know what I'm saying? That, and, mm -hmm. that, and, that's, and, that's, and that's how it is in some cultures. That's how it is in, in, generationally, like, uh, shit. Uh, fuck my uh, my dad. The motherfucker had cancer. Shit, he was fucked up and all kind of pain. We didn't know about it. this motherfucker. Started shitting himself. We're like, what's going on? And then when you find out, okay, oh, you need to go to a doctor, my man. And yeah, it ain't the same as that. But like, mm -hmm. there are certain generations where they just, you know, okay, well, whatever. That motherfucker, let me know what he need. Let me know when, when it's when it's that time. You know what I'm saying? So I, I mean, go ahead. My bad. I get that argument, but it's like. That don't make the shit right, though. I mean, it's to the oh, point, like, yeah. if we continue to we... not... And, yeah, like, we got to stop some of that mm -hmm. bullshit. We got to break those oh, generational not... curses or something. You know, like, right. it, it's just not... It's not the thing to do. I mean, if if you if you see a decline, like, yeah, that is a glimpse into a picture. Son got dropped off over at Papa's house. You know, maybe his mama was out in the streets. Maybe there was a little confrontation between mama's boyfriend and the son, and maybe she's choosing her dick over her son. You know, okay, right. I get nope. that, but that doing, speaks a lot of what to that little man. man's pain. <laughs> little man could have said, shut up his mama. She said, I can't deal with it. We're doing a lot of what yeah. is. And also, just because I point something out doesn't mean I agree yeah. with it. This is what it is. 
Right, right. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm just saying no. that, yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, like, I think it, it opens to the larger opportunity of being able to break some of the shit that we see within our own culture, within maybe some of our own familial dynamics. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I, I think we have people here who are trying to do it and also teach, you know, better ways to communicate and cope. But I think my man there on the screen, my man Ronaldo, yeah, he just want he just want to. I don't know if he work in the Orange Grove or whatever. That's that's racist. But whatever he doing, he just want to get back to that. That's all I know. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, we've been on this for a minute. Let's wrap it up with an even sadder story. A uh, husband of a teacher killed in a Uvalde massacre dies two days later from heart attack. <clears throat> the husband of one of the teachers killed in Rob Elementary School massacre has reportedly, reportedly died from a heart attack. That's sad. Uh, Joe Garcia, whose wife, uh, Irma Garcia, was murdered Tuesday in her classroom, suffered a fatal heart attack two days later, leaving behind the, cu- ah! leave behind the couple's four children. Mm. Yeah, they've been married twenty four. Yeah. They were married. They were married twenty four years. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yes. I, I don't know if anyone. I mean, I don't know if anyone else has to add to this. I mean, I, 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 it's sad. Uh, children are dead. Adults are dead. Um, uh, you got a community that that is, that is uh, rocked. You got a nation that continues to be. Um, this this trauma upon trauma uh, unleashed upon us and like <laughs> we it's like people in dc just hold the key to the fuckery they're like fuck y'all we ain't doing none mm-hmm. of this shit mm-hmm. so i ain't got nothing to add to it and at, and at some point in time all i'm gonna say man is that at some point in time some gotta give some gotta give some gotta give bro and i don't know what it's gonna be but the pressure gotta it has to be released at some point in time. And, Zed, and so, go ahead, to Jim. that point, um, I've got a I got a post here that was in one of the chat groups from a, a Keith A. Butcher. Um, it's got about ninety thousand shares. We go ahead and read it to you real quick. As ahead, educators, bro. we have done our part. We have fenced in school playgrounds and locked all doors except one single entry point. Uh, we have added a double entry at the front door and added bulletproof glass. We have led our students through active shooter drills and watched the scared looks in their, in the students' eyes as they cowered in the darkened room. Uh, research tells us that drills are not good for student emotional well-being, but we have kept them. Uh, but we want to keep them safe. We have added door stops to classroom doors and covered any classroom door windows. We have partnered with law enforcement to add metal detectors and school safety support officers. Teachers and administrators have completed hours of active shooter trainings and collaborated with county and state law enforcement uh, officers to hold active shooter simulations. Every teacher continues to place his or her life on the line for their students Uh with the understanding that they may be the next teacher who dies protecting their students. We have done our part. Now it's time for legislative representatives to do their part. So Uh we've got a six-point you know, six action items here. So, you know, let me know how you feel about them. But number one was ban military-style assault weapons. Two, require universal background checks for all gun sales. Three, close gun loop gun sale loopholes and require background checks on all commercial gun sales. Four, remove the prohibition of gun violence research by the CDC. Five, ban bump stocks and limit the size of ammunition clips. Six passed the Extreme Risk Protection Order Act, a red flag bill to allow relatives and law enforcement to temporarily remove firearms from an individual in crisis. You know, bro, um, I've known about all of those action points except for the last one for years. You know what I mean? Like, that's nothing new. You know, I mean, that's it's. Everything that she that I think you, it was a, a lady, right? That wrote that. That's uh, a guy. I mean, that's it, a guy, my bad. Every yeah. everything that he wrote, everything that he put on there is absolute. Yeah, it's on point. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just I'm not saying anything negative towards him. I'm just saying it's just fucked up that none of that shit's new. Like he's not. That wasn't no. That's not no groundbreaking shit. You know what I mean? No breaking news shit. So that shit's been there. You know, it's no been. Doubt. Right, you know, it's so, been known about. It's been being asked for. You know what I mean? 
It's been being asked for, man. And I, I, we've definitely talked about bump stops. We've definitely talked about, um, you know, military style weapons. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. The, I don't know. The expanding the, the clip capacity. That's that's been that's been being discussed. That's been being talked about for years. I don't know about this uh, removing the prohibition the prohibition of gun violence research by the CDC. I don't know about that. Back in the nineties, I've heard I've heard about that. Congress yeah, said that, that uh, the money like there's no proof that research about this does anything to stop anything. So since the nineties, there hasn't been. Um, money from the CDC to go towards gun research until I think it was just a, a few years ago, a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, they started to get a little bit of money, but right now I think it's only like, it's like, I mean, it's millions of dollars, but it's not anywhere near the multiple millions that they need, actually need to be able to conduct thorough research mm-hmm. into all of this. So there's been no data about the impact, mm-hmm. the prevention of, or any of that stuff of gun violence because the government so official who was elected decided that. So I think the biggest takeaway, as always, is vote and know who you're voting for. And something I'd like to add to that, when uh, somebody mentioned earlier that I haven't rented a car in forever, uh, that you got to be 25 to rent a car. 25 or older. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking like, because, so, and maybe this is included in the concept of back expanded background checks or something, maybe, but I haven't heard it, but like, raising the age, man, because let's say you you run a background check on an 18-year-old, you're pretty much going to come up with nothing more than likely, because even if they've been in shit as a minor, those records are going to be sealed. I don't know if the background checks have access to sealed records. You know what I'm saying? For minors, but so there's not any time. So like let's say let's just say twenty five. Let's just say the age twenty five. Same age you have to be to win a car. A trouble, you know, a, a, a person with you know, that has a certain type of mind frame, you know, I would imagine between the years of eighteen and twenty five would probably have gotten into some shit. You know what I'm saying? The type of mind frame that it takes to go in and do this type of shit. You know what I mean? They probably didn't they probably would have got into some shit got arrested a few times, you know, a time at least once or some shit, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, you got an actual fucking sample size to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if I, I turn 18, my birthday's May 6th, I turn 18 on May 6th, I can go to fucking Walmart on May 6th and buy it, you know what I mean? Or to the or to whatever uh, gun store. You know, they're going to run some shit, but ain't shit going to come up. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that there should be some common sense measures that we can do to mitigate we not so the thing that I keep hearing from people who are gun rights advocates is the bad guys are not going to go by the rules. So you, there's no right. amount of legislation that you can put out there that'll bring an end to gun violence, and that may very well be true. But if you if you are the criminal and you can lawfully go in and purchase a weapon, and then same day, and then same day, go. Why can't we just put some fucking impediments? Put some roadblocks out there. Right. Yeah. So speed bump. Right. Speed bump. Right. Right. You yeah. gonna rob me? You know what I'm saying? You gonna rob me? At least I can lock. Let me lock the door. Don't yeah. leave the motherfucker open. Damn. Yeah. yeah and these like, last so, two. These and, and just these last two, man. The motherfuckers. You know those guns were bought legally. So what by eighteen year olds? By eighteen year olds. By eighteen year olds. You know. It so, is way like, and I don't know. For me, the gold standard. Like, I don't understand why we have so much more legislation in getting a vehicle than we do to have a gun. They are both vehicles are deadly. Vehicles are deadly. They're both deadly. They're both deadly. I'm right. And that's 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 the comparison. They're both deadly. Yeah, you're absolutely. And so therefore, we do all these things to make sure that you are handling a deadly weapon properly. You have to get it registered. Mm -hmm. You have to get it licensed. You know what I'm saying? You have to go through Mm -hmm. training. To be able to operate mm-hmm. this vehicle. But you know why? You know why? I think. I think it's because we lose money on cars and make money on guns. Well, there's also a lot of people are are do their thinking and everything based on the research, but there's been no research to be able to say that any of these things are going to help prevent the gun, the gun owners and these killers from doing the things. Like one of the things I was listening to today was talking about how 
a lot of the money for research in the car industry is what helps make like the barriers in the middle of the highway because they did research and figured out that if we put these barriers, there won't be as many accidents from cars mm-hmm. going one direction to the other. Oh, if we mm-hmm. put a strap around people's waist, that's going to keep them from uh, flying out the window. Oh, if we had another ocean. one around yeah. their chest, that's going to help them even more. The, because yeah. I think I think if there was the research that actually was going to be able to prove to these people who are the staunch rights, everybody gets a gun when you turn six, people, then maybe they'd be able to see, like, oh, there is evidence that shows that if this change was happening, then this would happen. If we had a longer waiting period, if we raised the age, if we did these things, but there's no research to that. And I feel like so many people in the government right now won't do anything unless it's backed by research. But there's no money for that research because they're preventing the research from happening. So it's just a vicious cycle, I think. Research or money. Yep, for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. All good points. All good points. And, yeah, I, I don't know what's going to change. So. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. Send the asteroid, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I. Anything else to add to this? I don't have a good caveat for it. So we're just going to watch this uh, shit sandwich down uh, with some fuckery. I'm not going to lie, though. I... I was disappointed that he did not that nigga onto the be- the the luggage conveyor, the belt. conveyor belt. Cause if that nigga had hit that conveyor belt and started rolling past the screen, <laughs> I would have shit myself at work. You're I would not not spit out water. I would have <laughs> shit myself at work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, video show notes. Uh, I, who is this? Who, who hey, can you play it one more time? I had it was small on my screen uh, for most of it. I'm gonna wind this. So you got Rashad Richie. Wait a minute, no, no, that's the people who are discussing it. Who who is this player? Former player? Do we know? So a former NFL <laughs> player and a United uh, uh, Airlines employee get into it. it. Do we know what the fuck they fighting about? Who cares? Who who cares? Bro, bro why is nigga beating up James Cone? But <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but the, the 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 flight attendant or the dude he was pushing a wheelchair because they ran out of carts, and the right. flight attendant dude was trying to get the cart the wheelchair from him, and I guess they started arguing about it and do stuff from behind the counter like, what's up? Like I guess that nigga wanted to lose his job that day and his life. Right? <laughs> he slapped that. Yeah, he slapped. He's he about to take here, a ride on a conveyor. Here, here you go, Zaire, from the beginning. He just yeah, like, sir, I just wanted to tell you that your your bag is over sixty pounds. Nigga took a standing eight count. I am like I said, I'm so disappointed that nigga did not end up on the uh the <laughs> belt. Break bread with your brothers whenever possible.